start that love train, folks. I got nothing but love in here. Even when I get heated. I just look at how beautiful the world is. I look outside, the sun's shining. Go play with my dogs. Happy faces. Dancing it up at the wedding. I mean, it, there's so many things to enjoy in life. And there is time for that enjoyment. But we do have to confront the real issues. We do have to go over the real topics. You know, we can't just bask. I mean, I can't even tell you how much mindless sports talk that I had to go through while I was at this wedding. I'm just like, oh, my God. And nobody knows about, you know, audit the Fed. Only my, my friends in the know that, you know, share this information, that check out InfoWars. And it's a little discouraging. But there is so much greatness, so much to fight for. Humanity is worth fighting for. And there's no reason to get racist about it or have some kind of a loony theory where you want to just, you know, eviscerate an entire ethnic group. Because that's what it comes down to when you hear callers uh, like the previous one. And it's just disgusting to me. Uh, let's go back to uh, Jim in Washington. Jim, you said you had an idea. Yeah, well, I thought there might be a, a double whammy way to get Alex a, a little bit of much, uh, much needed vacation time and to bring in a little mind to Infowars.com. And I kind of got the idea from uh, all the uh, front side advertising and what you guys did with that eBay auction for the uh, Tyranny Crusher 1. I thought it might be uh, an interesting thing if you guys could set up an eBay auction to do like a, a day at the range with Alex Jones at Frontside or something like that. Maybe a day, <laughs> two days, or a week. You know, and, I don't uh, know if uh, Alex Jones would be down with uh, being around guns and a fan that paid to be there. But you know, that's not a <laughs> <laughs> that's that's not that's not necessarily a bad idea. Maybe we could have a dinner with Alex Jones. It'd really be up to Alex. I mean, Alex is is really kind of an introvert when it comes down to it i have to beg to drag him out to a ufc event or to you know a bar if i'm hanging out with my buddies and it's it's a rare occasion i mean i do work here seven days a week in fact i got a little itchy just being back in new york for five days and not being in the office i mean i come here on weekends man this is my home and i don't know if he would go over something like that but i do think that's a good idea i think somebody would pay up to five to ten grand to hang out with alex jones for a day but i mean look how often he takes off i mean i think the last time i subbed in for the show was probably over a month ago and he'll be back tomorrow he's just taking this day off to spend some time with his kids some much deserved time and i gotta tell you you know i, I got to hang out with my little niece and uh, she's four years old right now and it was just it, I, I needed it. it it was so nice to spend a day with a toddler that loves you and uh, I, I can understand why he needs to take that time off i don't know if he'd be taking it off to make a profit because oh god forbid we make a profit here or we try to turn around you know we just I think we made it official, and we did get the area next door, and we are going to be working on building a TV studio there. So hopefully within the next 6 to 12 months, we have yet another program for people to watch, maybe a, uh, a weekend more news-type program, a different type of format than this. Actually, anchors sitting there, and in the background, you'll see the news story, and we'll play the clips from there and wear a suit. You know, I won't be rocking my Affliction T-shirts and, and really try to bring it to the next level. So I think that is a good idea, and I'll pass it along. Anything else? Oh, nothing. I just heard him uh, talking about how he would reminisce about uh, shooting and losing his losing his edge, and how he kind of wanted to get back into it, and how he just started the uh, the new ad campaigns with the front site guys. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I just thought it'd be a good good way for him to get in a little trigger time. All right, Jim. I thank you for the call. And there's a great video out there of Alex shooting one of these little pea shooter shotguns when the Dick Cheney incident happened. And that was the first time that I had ever seen Alex Jones. I think the first and only time I had seen Alex Jones actually fire a weapon. And if you haven't seen that, that was a big hit on YouTube. I think it happened like three, two or three years ago when that story was big. Let's go to David in Florida. David, you're on the line. Uh, yes, great, sir. great show today. Thank you. Well, one thing I wanted to mention, um, and I haven't heard it on your show, and I'm just kind of perplexed as why not, but uh, Benazar Budo in a David Frost interview... Uh, oh, which it. happened right before her death on sure. uh, December 27, 2007. Mm -hmm. She mentions in that just sort of haphazardly that, oh yeah, by the way, that's when that's when Bin Laden died. Well, let me take let me take it a step further. She doesn't just mention that Bin Laden died. She mentions that Bin Laden was murdered, and we have played that not only on the I've played it on the Alex Jones show sitting in. I've played it probably half a dozen times on my program, The Info Warrior. But she mentions that the guy that killed him is a man named Omar Saeed Sheikh. Now, who is Omar Saeed Sheikh? Let's take it back a second. This is the guy that was supposedly responsible for the Daniel Pearl murder, the guy who cut off Daniel Pearl's head. Now, what was Daniel Pearl in the Middle East doing? Well, he was trying to find out the funding of these, quote-unquote, radical Islamic groups that funded 9-11. 
Now, the other interesting thing about Omar Saeed Sheikh, the supposed murderer of bin Laden and the supposed murderer of Daniel Pearl, is that he was on an ISI payroll and was a multiple intelligence agent. He wasn't just working for the ISI. In fact, he funneled $100,000 uh, through General Mahmoud Ahmed, the then head of the ISI, to Mohammed Atta just before the attacks. But nobody wants to talk about that. Isn't that weird? It's very strange. Yeah, but it's another very thing strange. that I find funny too is, uh, like regarding that last call that was uh, racial. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's very funny that there's 545 people basically in Washington calling the shots. I just got an email on this today mm -hmm. versus 300 million. Mm -hmm. And if you look at it, the you know because you look at the the two houses of Congress and then uh, you know the Congress, the Senate, and then uh, the judges, right? It's 545 people versus. Mm -hmm. But I would also million. say that it's even more than that. I'm not saying it's it's relative to the 300 million people, but the state senators actually do get a lot done. And I mean that's where Barack Obama was spawned from was the state Senate. Remember he gave a keynote address at the 2004 Democratic uh, National Convention without actually being a real senator. He was a state senator, which is kind of on the level playing field as a congressman. But continue. Um, the thing is, is that evil intention people organize mm -hmm. and what we're doing here i mean you, you you provide a great service and a great program of informing people but i think what needs to occur is the next step where we actually organize more mm -hmm. and actually go and take our country back i mean one of the things that we're, we keep hearing is the, is the complacency or the low intellectual capacity of the americans to actually confront evil which i think is a bigger bigger part than the intellectual side of it mm -hmm. um we need to actually confront the evil and organize, you know, do that by organizing more. Well, I think what we have to do is we have to support organizations uh, like Campaign for Liberty by running for, for office. And whether that be city councilman or local mayor or congressman or state senator, like I just discussed. And if you can't run for office, support the person that can. Listen, they are in fear of Ron Paul and Campaign for Liberty. Even though Ron Paul, we played a clip earlier, says that the American people get the government that they deserve. Well, unfortunately, 80 to 90 percent of the American people don't even know what the three branches of government are and aren't interested in the government whatsoever. And then that 10 percent, that kind of 10 to 20 percent, that kind of play spectator sports with, with government, half of them are still stuck in this left-right paradigm. So we have to break through, you know, I, I saw something great while I was in New York. It was the Wednesday House of Commons, and I thank you for the call, where Gordon Brown and Cameron are like WWE fighting. If you've never seen a House of Commons, it's here, here, and they actually get to ask each other questions and people cheer. It, it, it's almost a cool thing in the fact that they have to respond to all their constituents, whether it's fake or not or whether it's scripted or not. So they're throwing out insult after insult on each other, but they're not talking about the policies whatsoever. They're just saying that their policy is bad, my policy is good. Your policy is bad, my policy is good. So there's a third party now. It's called the Liberal Democrats. And finally, uh, the head of the Liberal Democrats, it's a very small party, gets to stand up and say his piece. And what does he say? He says, well, perhaps the reason that you guys are throwing insults at one another and fighting like, you know, just nonsensically not talking about the topics is the fact that you guys are in on it together and he says why don't you go take another cruise together and i'm just like wow that is top notch we gotta we gotta find that clip i don't think it's on the youtube yet it was from last week's house of commons like i said it needs we need to do a story on it on prison planet and uh info wars because in that session again and it should have been reported all over it wasn't and, you know i went to the guardian i went to the telegraph uh, i tried to see any story on it they just want to make it appear as though it didn't happen they don't want you to know that they're in on it together that they take cruises together that they're good friends behind the scenes that the establishment runs both puppets that's the real deal anti-federalist in georgia you are on the line sir hey good yes. to hear your voice again man been missing you late night oh thanks man appreciate it uh when on the air. Uh, like I was telling the uh, other other uh, caller, I will be back for a weekly show, a wrap up show after Alex's show from six to nine Central Time, and uh, hopefully after I get done with Invisible Empire, I will be returning to five nights a week. I got to tell you, it's really been a blessing in disguise for me because I was able to finalize the first third of my script. I mean, I have a rough outline. I obviously have all the clips. I've been doing all the research, but to finalize a third of my script and really only have two thirds of my script to finalize to go is just, you know, this is a process for me. And the last movie, I, I don't get as much help as, say, an Alex Jones. I work in the office. You know, Alex has two video editors that are working for him and milling through stuff. I have to do all that stuff myself. 
So, you know, in order to step back, I mean, I can't even tell you. I come in here early, uh, usually around the beginning of the Alex Jones show. I used to try help to help produce that because I was also producing my own radio show. So it was advantageous for me to go through routers, The Guardian, The Telegraph, MSNBC, Fox News, and all that, and get my stories ready for my show that was coming up. And then I would give Alex all the pertinent stories that I thought that he would want to cover. So then I would also leave in the middle of the day, go back, let my dogs out, come back. And then I would only get here a couple hours uh, before my show, and sometimes there'd be such breaking news, I'd have to go to the news wires instead of working on my film. So I was kind of falling behind.